Live from Miami Beach, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Veeam 2019. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to Veeam 2019 in Miami. My name is Dave Vellante, I'm here with Justin Warren, who's my co-host. Simon Robinson here is the Senior Vice President 451 Research. Simon, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming to theCUBE. Thanks for having me. So this is your, is this right, your first Veeam on? Is it that is, right? it oh, is. Okay. First Veeam on, first time in uh, Miami, first time in, uh, on theCUBE. So yeah, kind of, well, you know, bucket yeah. list, awesome. check. Hey, got to give, <laughs> give you a sticker here awesome. then. So there you go, awesome. thank great. you for coming on. It's got on my so, and, and of course you got the Veeam party tonight, which you may have been to some other Veeam parties at other shows, but uh, I, you know. I know them by reputation. Yeah, they're, they're good. And, uh, <laughs> and so, Looking forward to that, uh, two days. What have you learned here in the last couple of days? What are your impressions? Yeah, so uh, my impressions are that this is a, uh, you know, this is a, a, a conference that reflects the type of company that I think, I think Veeam is. Um, and, and, and Veeam's kind of a little bit atypical for a, uh, for a, a, a company, a technology company in this space. They didn't go down the traditional route. Um, they, they had a very kind of different model right from the get-go. Um, but what I see is real, real grassroots innovation. And um, you know, Veeam has always been uh, short on rhetoric, short on hype, and long on actually delivering the products and the capabilities that customers want. And it's been great to see examples of how that's playing out at the, at the show. And you know, we heard about uh, uh, you know, Ratmir talking about innovation. Um, you know, in 451 Research, we're an analyst firm focused on understanding the impact of innovation. Uh, we provide data and insight around the technology innovation life cycle, and um, you know, it's it was always been, we've, we've covered Veeam from uh, pretty much day one, and uh, it's always been clear to us that Veeam is a pretty special company. You know, not just you have to be in the kind of the right place at the right time with the, with the right product, but you also have to do it in a way that, I mean, they're kind of table stakes. You've got to do it in a way that actually engages and empathizes with what a customer is looking to achieve, and I think they, they got that at the grassroots level, at the kind of you know the, the VM admin level, uh, uh, you know, a decade or, or more ago, uh, and really have doubled down on that. So it's been it's been awesome to see some of the examples of that at the uh, at, at, at the conference this last couple of days. I mean, to have uh, you know a, 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 a general session with was it eight demos. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and they all worked. <laughs> they, they all worked. All of them, yeah, I was terrified when they wheeled out the the tub of water, <laughs> that, and I was like, <laughs> "That was all <laughs> laptop in there." But <laughs> hey, you know, it, it was it was awesome. And I think you know, Ratmi is talking around, um, you know, the, the, the kind of the, this being Act Two of of Veeam's journey and Veeam's story. Mm. But firstly, let's kind of pay tribute to what they did in Act One. I mean, I think for any company to um, you know, to build a, a billion dollar revenue business uh, software mm. uh, uh, is, is a phenomenal achievement. Yeah. So but to do it in the kind of data protection space, yeah, I know, right. it's, it's, even more so. It's on backup, it's like <laughs> yeah, possibly yeah. the most boring thing ever, and, it's, and they've kind of made it exciting. You know, they used to, they used to say that um, you know, backup was, well they used to say two things about backup. Firstly, it's the insurance policy, mm. and, for, and secondly, it was the one part of the IT environment that even storage people found boring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 But I mean, right. that, that, I mean, to see the kind of energy, enthusiasm, passion of uh, the folks here, that, that really true. isn't the case. It's been one of those boring but important factors. Uh, and then Veeam's ascendancy, I've, I've said this many times, has sort of coincided with the, the birth of virtualization. Yep. You were consolidating you know, physical servers and because they were underutilized, but then the backup had to be completely rethought, right? Because yep. you didn't have enough you know, bandwidth in the servers and the, and the capacity to, to run a backup job and here comes Veeam and it's yep. just perfect fit, bam, takes off. Now you got Act Two, which yep. is cloud. Yep. And I feel like it's jump ball, to use a you know, US basketball analogy. No idea what that means. Folk, but... yeah, folks who <laughs> don't follow basketball. <laughs> but it's start over, right? And so everybody's going after cloud, multi-cloud, hybrid. And so do you feel as though Veeam can replicate its success in what Ratmir's calling Act Two and in draft from Act One, and what are the what are the you know key factors? Mm -hmm. What's the what's the tailwind for them, and what are some of the headwinds? Certainly, competition, and we're going to talk about that. But yeah. what are some of the other things that you guys see in your research? Yeah, so I think I mean first off, I think the hybrid cloud is is, is a reality. Mm -hmm. I mean, our research tells us that 60% of organizations are looking to um, you know or, or, or characterize their strategy as being a hybrid hybrid cloud strategy. Um, 
but they're really struggling with actually enacting that and doing that in a kind of you know in a process organized uh, deliberate way um, you know we, we kind of got a lot going on in the kind of multi-cloud world um, but multi-cloud is often an accident rather than something deliberate. It just turns out that they've got all of this, sure. these assets across all these different Multi -vendor. properties. Multi-vendor, oh, I got all these clouds, that's right? right I mean, that's, that's right, that's right. And you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, again, go back a decade and how sort of relatively straightforward the data and application environment seemed. Right, I mean, you had your application, it was probably on-prem, it was on uh, running on a server that was connected to this bit of tin and... Little you, did we know at the time, but yeah, yeah right? Yeah. Right, and, uh, and uh, you know, fast forward to today, and data is just, you know, everywhere. Yeah. So, so I think, um, I think the, ta the tailwind for a company like, uh, like Veeam is that, um, it, it, is that Obviously, there's always going to be a need for backup, but I think that the conversation is evolving from one around data, you know, data backup into one of data management, because you can only manage the data in your environment if you understand where it is, what its value is, um, you know, what the p potential exposures are, um, and and I think that's why we see kind of a you know a big opportunity in managing data across this much more diverse and mm. broader environment. So given that, do you think customers are better able to manage that data environment now than they used to be, or is it actually getting worse because now it's a much more dynamic and disparate kind of environment? I, and I, people weren't that great at it beforehand. Yeah, Have I mean, they gotten better or not? It's, it's hard to generalize. I think, um, I think in the main, customers acknowledge that they do a pretty bad job of managing it on a holistic basis. Mm. Um, and, I, and I think we are seeing uh, many organizations do it, um, you know, do it on a piece by piece basis. I think, uh, I think things like GDPR have been a kind of a wake up call that, hey, mm. your data is your responsibility, right? Um, and whether that data is on your facilities or it's in somebody else's, that doesn't matter. It's still your responsibility. So that was kind of a little bit of a wake-up call for organizations, certainly in, in Europe, and I think we're going to see that kind of replicated across other, other we, regions. We had the rise of ransomware as well, which was actually the best advertisement for backup that you could ever have had. No doubt. A absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. He's been talking about the shared responsibility model, I mean, to your point, Simon, right? I mean, it's like security, right? I mean, yep. You know, somebody misconfigures an Amazon, you know, you know EC2. That's right. Yeah. Okay, it's that's right. Not Amazon. It's 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 that's a shared right. responsibility. And the same thing with GDPR, it, you know, malware. It, it really is. But I think um, you know when we think about what the, the the major challenges that any just about every business faces, it's um, it's how do they scale their operations in a way that's going to allow them to really take advantage of this thing we're calling digital transformation. I know it's yeah. an overused term, but... Um, but it's it, real. It, it is real, it is real. And, and uh, you know, our research, uh, we, we asked a question in a survey recently, which is, um, you know, what is your organization's kind of single biggest uh, uh, barrier? Mm. And it's, um, you know, it's, we don't respond quickly enough to the business. Yeah. Right, um, it's the biggest objective, but it's also the most difficult barrier to to overcome. Uh, and I think we we we're only going to start to address this if we can fundamentally have a different look at how we scale operations, and and that's across the application estate, it's across the infrastructure, and but it's also across model. data, yeah. right? And it's it's modernizing, it's transforming the way we think about you know managing data, and it's. <laughs> We, we, we don't want to kind of repeat the mistakes of the past and end up with you know, a zillion silos that all have you know, a person that needs managing that silo, that environment, we've done that. We don't want to, as we move to multi-cloud and we acknowledge that data and applications are going to be in a, you know, a, a greater diversity of locations, we have to have a, a model at scales to managing uh, across those environments. And, and it's that kind of consistency of approach uh, that I think the industry is lacking, but there's definitely an awareness that we need to address that. Yeah, so given that there's that awareness and there's a need there for the market, so there has been a refresh in, in data protection in, the, in that part of the industry. It, 
nothing much was happening for probably a good 10 years. Data domain was kind of the, the last big disruptor that we had in yeah. that marketplace. And then it feels like overnight everything changed. And suddenly there were a whole bunch of competitors all trying to go after this data protection market and Veeam being one of them. So with that kind of challenge for customers happening and this dynamic market, how do you see the market dynamics evolving as we, as we go through what, what Veeam calls its act two and, and people start moving to this hybrid cloud? What does that look like from, from your research? I think from, from, from a customer perspective, it is, it is often actually just perplexing. I mean, yeah. where, where do you start? Um, how do you think about this on a, on a strategic basis? And again, some of our research has, has pointed out, highlighted that, um, again, it's, a, it's, it's, it's kind of obvious, but um, how do we get better alignment between IT and the business? Um, and when we asked about that in the context of digital transformation, it was the businesses, it was the respondents that said, yes, our IT strategy is being developed in lockstep with the business, right? Those are the companies that feel like they can, uh, they have a good handle on this digital transformation, data transformation. And, and we do see a bit of a, you know, almost a kind of a, a schism opening up. There is a kind of digital leaders and the definitely digital laggards that are really, really struggling with this. And I think, you know, that, that to me means opportunity. I mean, there's opportunity for vendors to come here, uh, to come in here and, and, and address it. I think with, you know, data protection specifically, yeah, it's, if you'd have said 10 years ago that there was almost a kind of a Cambrian explosion of, of startups and new companies in backup recovery and data protection, DR. You know, that sounded like madness a decade ago. Um, you know, we're seeing absolute explosion, huge number of companies coming together, coming to market with real innovation, uh, which ultimately I think is going to be good for customers. I think there's, there's, <laughs> there's probably too many for the market to sustain at this point, because uh, all these new entrants, none of the incumbents are going away. Um, but I think you know it's going to be very much a kind of a partner-centric kind of success. Um, the, 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 there's a realization I think from certainly from the kind of hyperscale cloud providers that they're not going to be able to do this on their own, right? They're right. going to have to work with uh, you know legacy incumbents. Uh, they, these guys definitely have a role to play. I mean, I was just in a session earlier today talking about um, VTL in the cloud. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> VTL what? in the cloud. Hey, I mean, <laughs> the legacy processes—they are hard the, to the, kill. The, right? the more this, the, the more <laughs> this evolves, uh, the, the more it's, it seems like the, the public cloud is starting to resemble <laughs> kind of the on-prem world. Yeah. You know, in, well, in some that's way, interesting. In some ways. You know, I was in London a couple of weeks ago for the AWS summit, and Matt, Matt Garman. Um, who's an AWS exec, he's, I think he's the guy who first launched EC2, he was the product manager at the time. Now he's a senior executive. He said, we believe the vast majority of customers will eventually migrate all workloads into the cloud, and then it was, but, yeah. you know, and this is the but that they wouldn't have acknowledged two years ago, we realized that it's a hybrid world. We can't do this ourselves. And then they talked yeah. about Snowball and Outpost and all these other things that they're doing. So, and Microsoft has always had a different posture. Of course, it has a huge on-premise on state. Mm -hmm. But let's talk a little bit about the horses on the track. So you were mentioning some, some of the legacy backup guys, all the startups coming in. There's been over a, like a billion and a half raised for, yep. for data protection. But, so you got Veritas, Dell EMC, IBM, with its kind of Tivoli yeah, business, yeah, it's done yeah. some stuff with Catalogic. Yeah. And then you got Cohesity and Rubric, trying to get escape velocity, so they yep. get you know, tons of cash, having big parties, trying to <laughs> re replicate <laughs> that, that marketing momentum. And you got yeah. Veeam, like, has, has, to your point, Simon, built a billion dollar software business, Yep. yep. Okay, and is now saying, okay, we're going into and the next profitable. wave. And profitable. So yeah. I was speaking with Ratmir this morning and they're actually cash flow positive and, and on gap basis as well, they're making money. There's yeah. nothing more atypical than like a, you know, a startup know. type and, and company that's making money. And, right? you got, and you got specialists, you got like Druva in there and Zerto. Yeah, you got Zerto, you, you got, know, got lo a lot of guys. Furnace. Amanis just got taken out uh, yep. by yep. City. So yep. how do you guys see that competitive you know, market shaking out. Uh, Dave Russell did the bubble chart. Ratmir showed it yesterday. 15 billion. Is the TAM big enough to support all these guys? What do they have to do to get return for their investors? Uh, we're talking IPOs in the future before the window closes. It's, yeah. it's getting hairy. Yeah. It, it, it is, um, and you know, certainly some of those incumbents are not without their you know, having their challenges. Right. I think it's it's uh, incumbent on them 
to uh, to kind of listen to what to what customers are asking for. Mm. Customers are moving to the cloud, right? Uh, they're going to do that with or without the the kind of the 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 legacy guys, right? So they have to kind of get on board with that and help manage that process for customers. Um, I, I think um, what I like about some of the newer guys, the the rubrics, the cohesities, is they are they are talking about this, you know, this this bigger picture, this um, this issue that. I said at the start that, that many organizations acknowledge is, is a real challenge, and that's, that's having a, a, an overall view into their data estate, their data assets. Um, but you know, for, for many different reasons, it's always been very, very difficult to, to kind of crack that on a, on a holistic basis. Um, th these guys are you know, putting together some, some compelling stories and some compelling products to do that, and customers are definitely buying it. Mm -hmm. now, it's not on the scale that uh, they're buying uh, you know, Veeam on a very tactical basis. Um, so I think the challenge for Veeam is to, you know, is to evolve their own proposition from being um, you know, pretty tactical, important, absolutely, um, but to kind of move up the value chain from, from there. And I think we are starting to see uh, many examples of you know, how that is coming, coming into play uh, with some of the announcements we've had at the show today. Yeah, I mean, to your point, a billion dollars profitable, 350,000 customers, yep. and a, a modern sort of approach. Yeah, absolutely, right? absolutely. And, and, and you, know, so, so, you know, I mean, we've, we've heard simplicity so many times in the last couple of days, but, but to me, when we talk about, you know, if the challenge is operational scale, you can't do that without simplicity. And I think yep. the fact that they acknowledge that from a very early date, I mean, we, we, we speak to a lot of um, you know, customers overall, but lots of Veeam customers, every single one says, I love the simplicity. It, it, it works, it yep. just works. You know, it's these kinds of things that um, they really do matter. Um, because, not just because um, you know, uh, it, it just sounds great, but actually it lets, it either lets the administrator do other things, um, it's freeing up their time, or it allows a different part, maybe a less experienced or different uh, type of uh, professional to come in and manage the environment and not have to have a, a PhD in storage and uh, a backup and you know, all those things that, that, that made this such a um, kind of a, 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 a human capital intensive process in the past. Yeah, yeah. that easy and simple, they're easy, they're easy things to claim and many, many companies actually try to claim that they're either yep. easy or simple, it's really difficult to actually deliver on. That's right. And, but when you have customers coming back to you and telling you, you are simple and easy to use, yep. that's when you know that you've got it right. What I like about Veeam's messaging is, is I've heard it a lot this week, is it's, no, start with backup, it's, it actually is all about the backup. And, and you yep. don't hear that from a lot of the up, upstarts that are like, no, no, backup, it's all about the data management. It's, it's this sort of vision, these guys use the term aspirational, yeah, almost yeah. as a pejorative. Right. So it's kind right. of interesting to see that competitive yeah. battle. And then you yeah. got the, the, the legacy guys trying to hang on to their install base, maybe making some announcements. I mean, Dell EMC just made a bunch of announcements and it you know, kind of came out and admitted, hey, we took our eye off the ball. Yep. Obviously Veritas has a huge install base yep. that everybody's trying to attack. Yep. You know, yep. IBM there's with Tivoli. And, new CEO yeah. at Commvault. So, yeah, at yeah, Commvault, a... we I don't want to leave them out of the equation, right? They're right. doing their enterprise piece yep. and, and they've always had a little different angle on this space. So there's, there's a lot of action going on here. Um, 15 billion, you know, mm, half of that is probably backup. Right, right. You know? so, well, yeah. the challenge is Smart, that, right, the, yeah. the challenge is, is that it, this isn't a homogenous market. Right, right? Yeah. We, we, very there, fragmented. There, there are just You're so right. many different things that we need to protect. Yeah. There are so many different ways we can protect them. Um, that, that as soon as you start getting into the details, yeah. that's when it starts. The market starts to kind of stratify. And the cloud and, and new programming new models. Ones. Yeah, right. We got you know object storage comes up, right. and then we've got NoSQL databases that are, that are happening. Kubernetes protection. Yeah. The whole container thing, which we haven't really heard coming. an awful lot about this week. Um, I yep. think, I um, mean, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing how Veeam's story kind of evolves there. Yep. Um, but, but you know, if we do, you know, if we do accept that, you know, containers Kubernetes is going to be the new kind of middleware that connects new breed of infrastructure to a new uh, kind of application paradigm, if you like, mm. then that's going to need protecting. Uh, so I think, you know, we, we talk about it. Yeah, backup has been tactical, but but actually it is, it is a start of a journey. Um, and also I think um, you know, one thing that's come out from this last couple of days is just the importance of DR 
and that's yeah. absolutely reflected in our in our research when we ask about you know what are the big challenges in the kind of storage and data arena dr is a top two challenge every single time yeah it's too expensive it's too difficult to uh, it's uh, to, to, to kind of run to build to test I've been hearing that for 15, 20 years, yeah, right. right? And you right, know, right. we're still not there. You can't automate the testing. It's too <laughs> it's, dangerous it, to fail over and fail back. Right. So yeah. we don't do it and we don't so, test so, it. And... So, you know, we, we clearly haven't cracked this, this one yeah. uh, as, as an industry. Yeah. And, and there is, you know, massive latent demand, I think. And I think as, um, you know, as, as we think, uh, you know, it, it's, I mean, who can tolerate any sort of downtime for any sort of application, right? It yeah. just becomes, you know, uh, a prerequisite to have applications always online. Um, you know, that prerequisite for effective DR is going to continue. Yeah. Okay, guys, we got to go. Thanks very much, Simon, for coming on hey, the Hey, great. Great to, great great to be to here. Have you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. You're watching theCUBE live from Vmon 2019 from Miami. We'll be right back. Thank <laughs> you.